Good morning and welcome to our fifth reflection and it's a Good Friday. We pray. As we open our hearts this holy week to new revelations of what you went through, we pray that we would be forever changed as we start to understand more deeply the immense love you have for each one of us. <clears throat> A love proved by your suffering and then onto the cross at Calvary. Amen. Isaiah 53 verses 7 and 8 from the Passion Translation. He was oppressed and harshly mistreated. Still he humbly submitted, refusing to defend himself. He was brought like a gentle lamb to be slaughtered like a silent sheep before his shearers. He didn't even open his mouth. By coercion and with a perversion of justice, he was taken away. And who could have imagined his future? He was cut down in the prime of life for the rebellion of his own people. He was struck down in their place. One of the, the bits I just want to highlight on this morning is those words, refusing to defend himself, he was brought like a gentle lamb to be slaughtered. I don't know about you, but if I feel that I'm being attacked, especially if it's a verbal attack, I, I want to not just def get defensive, I want to attack back. How dare someone say something against me when I know I'm in the right. And, and to be honest with you, sometimes how dare someone say anything against me, even when I know I'm in the wrong. Jesus submitted himself deliberately to unsubstantiated claims and lies about his character. Also unwarranted attacks physically on his person. You know, one of the things I want to do in life is I want to lose weight. I'm good most of the time. But the reason is that I don't lose weight is that I'm only good about what I eat most of the time and not all of the time. It only takes five minutes or even five seconds a day of, of me giving in to my desire to eat junk food for me to lose weight. I have to be vigilant every minute. In the same way Jesus could have called down angels at any time during his trial. He could have miraculously stopped proceedings at any time and said, I'm the one in the right here. Yet for every second of his trial, suffering and slaughter, he did not waver. He kept his eyes on the will of the of Father God, knowing that he was leaving his friends, his family, knowing he wouldn't be able to look after his mum into her old age. Every moment, every second, he did not waver from doing the will of his Father. A love to do his Father's will, a love for us, and to defeat the enemy, he suffered and suffered and suffered and died. And I'll read this uh, passage again that we've just heard, but from the voice translation. And in the face of such oppression and suffering, silence. Not a word of protest, not a finger raised to stop it. Like a sheep to a shearing, like a lamb to be slaughtered, he went. Oh so quietly, oh so willingly, 
oppressed and condemned, he was taken away. From this generation, who was there to complain? Who was there to cry foul? He was, after all, cut off from the land of the living, smacked and struck, not on his account, because of how my people, my people, disregarded the lines between right and wrong. They snuffed out his life. We pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for the gift of your Son. How can we ever know the true cost and pain it caused you? Dear Lord Jesus, thank you that you were willing to give up your life for each one of us, that you tolerated pain, suffering and shame, gave up everything. Lord, we know that there have been times in our lives when we've rejected your love, when we've turned away from you, when we have not been what we should be. Help us now not just to live for you, but also to die to self and to take up the cross as you did for us. We ask this in your holy name. Amen. <laughs>